It's time to stop and smell the photos. We are, of course, in Carlsbad, California, one of the greatest places for flowers in the world at the flower fields. And on today's episode, I'm going to give you a lot of great tips for how to use your phone to get great photos of flowers. We're also going to explore the village of Carlsbad, cute little beach town, great old Victorian buildings and such. So stay tuned as we head off to Carlsbad. First, some quick logistics. Carlsbad is in northern San Diego County, about 40 minutes from the city, right near Legoland. We're going to begin, however, with the flowers first, and then we'll explore the village with our phones. We start at the flower fields because they're only open from March 1st through Mother's Day every year. So if you're watching this and you have time, you want to get there before they close. And if you caught this after Mother's Day, well, mark your calendars and be sure to get there because it's quite the sight. Okay, tips for photographing flowers with your phone. Well, with for good shots with flowers is earlier is often really good because there's still some dew on the flowers and those little dew drops and sometimes the shadows that you get with that early morning light looks really good. Do it all. Do everything. Use every lens on your phone. Use the wide angle, the ultra wide angle, and the telephoto. Start with the wide angle for a big, expansive view of the flower fields. Um, get, lo get low, get high. Left and right. Shoot from all angles. Of course, we'll begin with the obvious, big, wide, sweeping shots of the fields, rows and rows of flowers, and then come in tight for the close-up. If you have macro on your late bottle phone, oh boy, you are in floral heaven. And with the macro, you can get right in the flower's face and get as close as, pot, as, close as you can. I mean, like this close. The trick with macro photography is to get as tight as possible just right over that flower. The only issue is that when you're shooting in direct sun, the closer you get to the flower, the more likely it is that you're going to produce a shadow from the phone over the flower. So the best tip is actually to get the macro shots in the shade if it's possible because then you will not have the shadow issue. Check out our playlist right here for how to get more out of macro photography. And speaking of flowers, don't forget about portrait mode to blur the background and put all the focus on the flower itself. But my favorite, my favorite hands down is getting down really low and looking up at the flowers. the environment if you find an old tractor pose with it and of course posing by flowers in and around flowers is also really popular as well as just having fun meanwhile while morning is great don't forget about sunsets i was really glad i returned to get the shot even though the fields themselves were closed when the sun dropped a really popular freeway to get this shot is to drive up armada drive and visit the overlook now if you don't believe me just type in Carlsbad Flower Fields viewing spot in Google Maps. It's right there. If you'd like to see my photos from the Carlsbad visit, well, I selected the best 30 out of 2,000 images snapped, and they're presented in a smug mug gallery, free from the algorithm and from lower resolution presentation. Smug mug is where I run my website, show off my work, and sell photos to clients. From the fields, let's head into the European-style village of Carlsbad, which is known for small mom-and-pop shops, cute restaurants and cafes, and a railroad that runs through town often. Photo highlights, uh, of course, the Carlsbad sign. You gotta get the scenic beach photo. It's the twin ends. <laughs> Just walking along, actually, the wall in Carlsbad. And we will explore all of them along with tips on where and when to photograph the Great Carlsbad sign, the former Twin Inn building, how to shoot panoramas, a falcon in a cage, where to get the best overhead shot of the beach, and some insights on food photography. We'll start on State Street right by the old railroad stop. It's pretty much the center of town and you could easily stroll the entire shopping district in about a mile. Basically, Carlsbad is a very, very unique town. Um, it has been around since the 8th 
late 1800s. It's still quaint. It's maintained a lot of its simplicity. Um, the town is small in that it's really core centered around all the activities that go on. So if you indeed are going down to Carlsbad, you know you're going to go to the village. You're going to walk all the shops, everything that it offers. It's got a diversification like no other town does, but it's very compact. So it's all within walking distance. It makes it much easier than having to get in your car and drive because parking is a nightmare. Now, photo-wise, what jumped out at me in downtown Carlsbad, beyond the beach, Twin Inn, and Great Sign, were a few other things as well. One of the best it's a spots is at the crazy Senior Grubbies on Carlsbad Village Drive. After all, Senior Grubbies says so on the mural, right? Walk a few steps to Carlsbad Boulevard and you'll encounter one of the town's real jewels. As previously mentioned, that old Victorian mansion once known as the Twin Inn, dating back to the late 1800s and now home to the popular San Diego surf shop and a whole bunch of other stores. By the Village Fair building, that iconic Carlsbad sign, the one everybody wants to photograph or pose in front of. For the sign, I met with one of the reps from Village Fair, which owns the building now, and he invited me to come upstairs for a VIP look at the sign from the roof, which was pretty fantastic. But in the end, the shot from down on the ground actually looked best to me. Tip, photographing the sign from the liquor store on the opposite side of the street is not the way to go. It ruins it. It's where you do not want to take the shot because you'll have a street light in the way of your sign. The Village Fair side is way better. For the best view, cross the street at the crosswalk, and if you have the stomach for it, step into the meridian several feet back, and you'll get a really nice shot, especially at night. The Village Fair extends beyond the Great Victorian to a large outdoor shopping area, here I stumbled onto another fantastic mural, which I thought did a super job of showing off the town. While photographing her, I happened to meet the artist behind the mural. Why is there a camera there? The camera's because we want you to take the picture of the mural with you in it. Okay. So you can take a piece of Carlsbad home with you, and um, you can say, I was there. When I visit a beach town, one of the first questions I always ask is where to get the best sunset shot. I can unequivocally say that the best rooftop shot is hands down at the Spring Hill Suites by Marriott at the rooftop bar, which overlooks the ocean and is a great place to hang. Even better, photographically, unlike many rooftop bars, which make you take the photos through distracting tall glass, the windows here are small and it's really easy to place your phone over them for the view. But as much as I like the shot up here, Let's face it, being down in the sand is the best place for photography, joining in the nightly pastime of sunset watching with the crowd. There's a great walkway across the street called The Wall, which is where I looked for a great shot. I usually like to have something in the foreground for my sunset image, and one option is always the handy-dandy lifeguard station, as well as street photography of people walking in the sand. On this evening, the sun was super impressive and huge, and I was able to capture it best on my Samsung Galaxy 23 Plus, which has the largest telephoto of any major phone brand at 10x compared to 5x on the iPhone, Pixel 8 Pro, or even new models of the Galaxy. Photo tip at 10x, it compresses the image a bit, and it will make the sun look just a little larger than usual. I shot the video at normal speed, but I sped it up in editing so that we could watch the sun say goodnight. So the next day, we're hungry, and we met up with the folks from Carlsbad Food Tours for a different approach to exploring a town. Call it a photo food walk. So you get to know uh, kind of the story and the history of Carlsbad through its food. On the tour, we sampled food from local restaurants, Italian, Mexican, some crepes, local donuts, strawberry shortcake, and wine. We also learned about water's place in the history of Carlsbad, or should I say mineral water, which was said to cure ailments when it was discovered in the late 1800s by Captain John Fraser, the man appearing in this statue. The water was found to be similar to a mineral spring in Europe that happened to be called Carlsbad. 
thus a new name for this California community and water that is to this day still being marketed. A big thing that's happened over the last five years is everybody takes pictures of food nonstop, right? Right. Right. I do too. Nick. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do you have any tips for how to get a great food shot that you've learned through the year? Well, you know, you got to watch the kids do it because that is. They know how to use their iPhones, and they kind of like roll it over, and uh, and it's moving. It's action. It's no longer just sitting still. With you put the background with the food, and then you go up to the person, that type of thing. You tried that move with the luscious strawberry shortcake dessert that topped off the day. Another tip: go high with your phone. At the Goods, the popular donut shop right in the center of town, well, the goods are behind glass, but you can still reach over for a good shot. The donuts are accessible, even though they are quasi-hidden. Have fun. Also on the tour, we looked at many of the local sites of Carlsbad, including some of these mega trees that are just absolutely impossible to capture in one frame of a shot. So, photo tip, panorama and go horizontal, up instead of vertical across, which is normally how you do it. You can go vertical and you can get a great shot of a tree. We closed off our time in Carlsbad at the Agua Hediana Discovery Center, a great place for hiking seeing a great lagoon and getting photos of wildlife. So there's three lagoons in Carlsbad. Ours is the only one that's all in Carlsbad because the other two, uh, one borders Oceanside and one borders Encinitas. So um, I not only say that we're the people's lagoon, we're the Taj Mahal of the lagoons. <laughs> Today we are in a conservation effort and we want to make sure that they're here and whole so that these wonderful critters that call it home will stay here. Now, speaking of critters, you won't only find birds like swallows and herons and such outside, but inside, you've got the tortoises and the bunnies and the snakes and the falcons and the owls. And let me show you a quick tip on how to get a great shot of those wildlife. Yes, the wildlife is behind a cage, but also yes, Take your smartphone and put one of the lenses of the phone into one of the holes, and you'll get a really good close-up. Make sure to go on telephoto for this. For the snakes and the tortoises and the bunnies, they're really nice people. The Discovery Center will take them out of the cages and make it a lot easier for you to get your shot. Carlsbad is home to many places to stay, from fancy resorts on a hill to beachfront properties and short-term rentals. Many people visiting San Diego told us they choose rooming in Carlsbad as a quieter, roomier alternative to staying in California's second largest and very busy city, some 40 minutes to the south. And of course, many folks opt for Carlsbad to be closer to Legoland. We stayed at the Casera Carlsbad, part of the Hilton's Tapestry Collection, where we were quite pleasantly surprised by the great view out the window of the flower fields and classic windmill directly below. Right down the street from the hotel during strawberry season, it's strawberry fields forever. You get to pick them, you get to buy them, you get to taste them, and boy, are they good. And a big shout out to our friends at Visit Carlsbad for their hospitality. So that's Carlsbad. I hope you picked up some great tips on how to get cool pictures of flowers. Remember, the flower fields close on Mother's Day, so if you don't make it this year, mark your calendars March 1st to Mother's Day. Meanwhile, Carlsbad is open year-round. We've got a lot of cool videos about the San Diego area and the California coast right up here. So stay tuned for more. I'm Jefferson Graham, and I'll see you on the next photo walk. Bye-bye, everyone. 